still nutrition line, my main man, Dustin Scrappy Lampros. How you doing, my man? I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk with you today. How you doing? Doing real good, man. So busy. Gosh, like I just the MMA world, right? It used to be a show every six weeks, a big show, and then all these middle main tier ones once every two, three months. XFN last I saw you you were there. I'll talk about that later. Uh, just so much is going on. Island fights every week and UFC on ESPN every week. It's crazy. And we're very excited. We talked to you on uh, July 25th. Um, yeah. We talked about how you wanted to fight one more time at the end of the year. So, boom, uh, let's hear it. Yeah, we're here, man. November 1st uh, for Shamrock FC uh, 324. Yep. Uh, man, I'm, it's an honor to fight for them, honestly. I mean, having 324 shows is not something – is common it's not too common for you know smaller promotions i should say to be that uh consistent and that successful with their organization so yeah uh, november 1st i get to head back to the cage and showcase my skills this time though in the main event you kind of like that you like that uh scrappy? yeah 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 i talked to them <laughs> they said i was gonna be the main event and then i kind of they're like you know it's it's leaning towards that and then kind of almost in a like not self-proclaimed it, but, you know, like, they gave me the vibe that it's it's a good possibility, so I'm going with it, and I'm sure I will be, and uh, it's it's going to be a good one. I mean, uh, fighting a tough kid from Indiana, his okay. name's uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Thornton, uh, you know, he's, he has, like, uh, this will be his 16th professional fight, so he has some good experience, and, uh, yeah, man, I'm excited to, to see how this fight plays out. I mean, obviously, I, I think it's going to play out how the last four have played out, but uh, we'll find out. Sure. Uh, that's funny. I kind of that was my next one. But you said something that was very alarming. 16 fights. That, that's a big thing, uh, especially in mixed martial arts over anything. Uh, Tom Brady experience, right? Like the fight game experience is gold. It's 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 priceless. So it's it's to me, it's alarming that you said, yeah, it's hey, this kid's got 16 fights. That's something I got to deal with. And you're you're ready for it. It's not like you're just eh, five and oh, I can't wait. You know what I mean? No, no, and I'm I'm not putting it past him. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. You know, like I said, this this will be his 16th fight, and you know he has 15 fights prior, and you know I know that he has a lot of experience, so he he has that edge, you know, of being in there more cage time, the whole nine yards. I mean, especially with none of my pro fights going past the second minute mark in the first round, so yep. he def you know he definitely is gonna have that uh, advantage. But you know, I I still believe you know I'm training with the best in the world. I live this lifestyle. I don't take any shortcuts. This is what I do from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, you know. Um, so I, I, I definitely think no matter what, I'm still going to have the upper hand and I'm going to go out there and outclass this guy. I love it. I love it. We can't wait. So funny, man. You've I got like seven notes here. They're underneath the TV. No one can see. And you like you nailed every single note. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get a little <laughs> bad on that when it comes You're interviews. Killed. I like talking and I'll just dig no. into it. But – no, man, I'm excited. This is a good <laughs> opportunity for me to go showcase my skills versus a game opponent, and I'm I'm ready. No, I say it all the time, man. I've been on, this is, you know, my 200th show. It's not, you know, I do 200, but with 200 different other people. It's, I, I want to talk as minimal and just give it to you. I, I'm the I'm the quarterback, and I want you to be Odell Beckham Jr. I want you yeah, to run. Yeah, just <laughs> taking it, taking uh, the spotlight. No, no, I appreciate it. Uh, Shamrock FC 301, 305, 314, 318, all first round finishes. All yeah. is that like I wrote like the key word I wrote was gratifying. Like, are you like really just uh, people are labeling you as a finisher? Is that something you do like? Yeah. It's like, oh, hell yeah. Like that's that's a buzzword in the MMA game. Of course, you know, and I, I take pride in that. I mean, granted, you know, my competition hasn't been, uh, you know, world class. They're not the best guys in the world, but. For me, this is building blocks, and I'm building myself as a fighter. You know, I don't, this isn't a – you just jump into the shark tank from the deep end. You know, you don't do that to me. I'm building myself, and, uh, you know, I I, uh, I look forward to getting this next finish, you know, to really show that I am a true finisher, you know, not just getting a couple finishes. You know, I want to – I would like to finish out my next two fights for Shamrock with all finishes and, you know, have, you know, five, six full fights where they're all finish, uh, finishes in the first round. Obviously, that's in a perfect world, but uh, <laughs> however the fight plays out, you know, it's going to happen. Right. 
And then who knows, maybe a, an uncle will give you a call after that six fight. And, uh, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, there's there's a bunch of uh, I see there's a few 35ers out there. You know, I talked to my agent like there's a few guys out there on the chopping blocks uh, that have gone 0 and 1, 0 and 2 in the UFC, uh, you know, that are really good potential matchups for me after this fight in November. And, you know, if they uh, if they want me to fight one more and finish that six fight with Shamrock. I'm completely fine with that. Uh, I'll in. If they want two more after that, I'll keep doing it. I'll keep knocking guys out and sure. keep uh, climbing that ladder. But for me, yeah, I would uh, – as much time I put in this and much I sacrifice, you know, like I said before, I don't really do anything other than this. I don't I don't have relationships outside of this. I don't date. I, I This this is more than a full-time job for me. This is 24-7, you know. Right. Uh, everything I do is pertained to my career. So for me – uh, it's taking the right steps, you know, if the right fight gets offered to me, then I'm going to take it, you know, okay. and if I can get, if, if I get out of this fight in November with no injuries and I get that offer, I get the call up, I'm going to take it more than likely. And I'm going to go headstrong. And I don't, I don't see just because it's in Shamrock or UFC, I still plan on getting first round finishes in my, my debut for the big show. Oh yeah. No, I can't wait. Um, how and how important is it to you, your relationship, ongoing relationship with Shamrock FC? Uh, you talked about it real quick earlier, how, you know, 324, that's a lot of shows. That's amazing. It's kind of funny that uh, MSG show for UFC is like their fifth hundred show, not even number, but like all the live events they do. So it's, it's a mistake to get up that high. So how important is it to you, your uh, relationship with Shamrock FC? It's huge. You know, I think uh, my relationship with them is, a big factor in my career, you know, is I think if you don't have a strong relationship with the promotion, you know, you're just kind of a fighter out here, just winging it, taking fights. You don't know when, when your next fight's going to be. You know, I like the I like the fact that they have a show every month, you know, so yeah. I can kind of have a schedule for my whole year planned out. All right. I'm a, if all goes well, obviously injuries, financial issues, everything, uh, if everything works out. You know, I can kind of plan, hey, I'm going to fight this month, this month and this month. And for me, having a relationship with them is uh, is very key. It's something that I picked up from my peers and my teammates that are in the UFC, you know, seeing how they got to where they're at and taking their advice. And that's what I'm implementing. It's my gameplay. Absolutely, man. And hopefully nothing financially. Hopefully Platinum Vape is uh, uh, helping you out because you're killing it. Oh, every- yeah. Shout out to Platinum Vape for sure. Shout out, man, right? Like My man, Jesse Howley. Yeah, man. He- Sure. Every time They're I see out. them on Facebook, I see you on Instagram, you're always wearing the PV, the Platinum Bay shirt. Yep. So, Shout out I, to hey, I'm a Bay. customer because of Dustin. So there you go. There's there's one in the books for you. Yeah, hey, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. That's, <laughs> Absolutely. That's key in this in this uh, sport, man, is uh, yeah. especially what we do. You know, like I, I found out, you know, I really got to invest everything more than just fighting itself outside of the cage. You know, my presentation, the way I talk, the, the way right. I pretty much do everything, you know. So I, uh, you know, having Platinum Vape jump on board with me this past year has changed my life completely. Honestly, they they've been sponsoring me month to month, helping me out, uh, you know, making sure that I'm training full time. And it's a it's a blessing, you know, and then I have obviously other sponsors uh, that continuously uh, are always there for me, like utmost existence. My, my shirt on resin, they help me out a lot, too. So, uh, yeah, it's a blessing. For sure. Hey, it, there's so much in the game. It's just not the fights anymore. It used to be UFC four used to just be about who wins and who loses. Now it's not. It's about who can talk, who can walk, who can sing. It's about what you're wearing. You got Henry Cejudo wearing snakes. It's just that's the game nowadays. It's 2019, about to be 2020. That is absolutely the game for me. It's like I connect with one, two fighters. And then my third call is a sponsor. I'm, I'm working on it nonstop. I got my uh, CBD fusion right here, man. This stuff is working it's magic. It's magic. Awesome. My, I'm 35 in my prime right now. Fusion CBD is making it right for me. So uh, big ups to them. Um, also with you real quick, it's kind of funny. Uh, on Instagram, my main man, Scrappy135 MMA. And after your professional career is done in the mixed martial arts, 2027, right? You're done in the game. Maybe skateboarding will be your new thing because I see you on Instagram kick flipping it over there with Supreme Patty, Charles Rosa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's funny. That used to be one of my first loves. I, uh, really? my dad, when I was a kid, he built a half pipe in our front yard and I used to have friends over and skate, but I love that ever, by the way. It's something, wow. 
you know, it goes along with the sport. Because uh, if I didn't fight and I had a normal job or just, you know, whatever, pursue something else, I probably would skate. Honestly, I love skateboarding. I think it's okay. it's a blast. But unfortunately, uh, I can't take that type of risk on getting hurt, you know, and injuries. I already get injured enough in training as it is. So yeah. that's just one less thing that I need to be doing. And, you know, I just got to make a, a smart decision and not really hop on a board. But, yeah. From time to time, if I see one, I'll pop out a kick flip if I can, and you know, the kick flip master right there, there. crap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> talking about getting hurt during training, you train at. It's so funny. American Top Team's down there. We talked about it in the last show, um, but people have to have to pay attention to Hard Knocks 365 on fire. Um, Vicente on fire. How about uh, Gilbert Burns about to fight again versus Gunnar Nelson? Ooh. Michael Johnson, a monster. My boy, one of my personal favorites, Stephen Mowry's down there. It's just, it's a who's who and just the gym, all the stuff on your Instagram and everything you put out there in social media, just seeing how high end, high tech the gym is. Talk about how great Hard Knocks 365 is. No, Hard Knocks is great. And, you know, that's why I put it out there on Instagram, you know, from time to time, uh, you know, put some little videos on my story of us training this or that. And it's not necessarily to say like, oh, look at us, but it's just, uh, you know, it, that's what I do every day. So I like, I like people to see that. And I mean, Hard Knocks is, it's, it's just a different, it's a different world to me than when I trained at ATT. You know, the, the gym vibe is insane. Everybody cl- like vibes really well. There is no groups. There is no, you know, uh, working together over here separately. Everybody does everything together. And honestly, that's a, for me, you can't get a better, uh, MMA team than that, honestly. Right. I I got to get down there to ATT. I got to see what's going to happen with Covington, Mazadoff, and Dustin. I got to see this. It's like that trifecta. Too much, all- too much drama for me, man. I just want to train and and focus and you know right. have good have that good vibe around you. You know, like that's one sure. thing. I wake up every day, even if I can't train, if I'm hurt, I like going there and just being around the guys because you know I. I I, like, I feel sick to my stomach if I miss a day going to Hard Knocks. You know, you never yeah. know what opportunities are going to be there. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know what you're going to learn, you right. know. And and it's I think having that type of team, that like that family feel, how we all are, like I'm pretty sure I could call almost every single guy on that team right now. And if I needed something, they would they would lend a hand out to help me, you know. And that, that alone right there, that says it all, you know. For sure. And, I think that makes a big difference in your training, you know, in your your everyday mindset when you're waking up and you got to go train all day and you're you're sore and tired instead of thinking shit, I don't want to go train there, you know, I don't really want to be around anyone. That's never right. when I'm down, I like going there. I'll sit there and I'll talk to them. I'll vibe with my, you know, the guys there that I look up to, like Sean Soriano, Robin Van Roosman, you know. I'll yeah. sit there and I'll talk to those guys and explain like, "Hey man, I'm feeling this way, you know, this is going on and that's where they come in like big brothers and they, you know, they set you straight and tell you what it is. And man, I love it. No, oh, that's awesome, man. Um, this is my personal take. Uh, talking to a bantamweight, uh, Dustin 2020, I think it's going to be a humongous year for the bantamweight, especially in the UFC, uh, with Henry Cejudo finally coming back, being healthy. I, I assume he's going to fight two, three times. And then there's just like, I like Sterling's on the rise. Peter Yan's on the rise. You got Cody Nola coming back into the mix. And then you got guys like Pedro and Marlon who kind of like bust in on the scene. So that's kind of my take. I think it's a big year for bantamweights. What's, what's your take? What's your stance on uh, the bantamweight division? Yeah, I 100% agree. And okay. I believe once I get in there and I get in the mix, it's going to be it's gonna be even more exciting, you know? I, right. I look at these guys and I see, you know, I, I think style or fighting styles make, you know, the, it draw the crowd and mm. they bring, you know, the attention. So... I, I see everyone you just named, you know, they bring very exciting fights to the table. And uh, I think that, yeah, this coming year could be the momentum and switch and get a little bit more attention to the lower weight class. And right. like I said, once I once I get in the mix, hopefully I can make these fights just as exciting and uh, put on some shows for everyone. Man, I love it. Um, I would love your prediction this Saturday, another show, ESPN, UFC, um, the featherweight division, one underneath you, Yara Rodriguez versus Jeremy Stevens in the main event. Who do you have in that one? You know, it that to me comes to a matter of uh, who lets their hands go. If, Steve, if uh, okay. you know, Jeremy doesn't, uh, if he doesn't wait on Yair to get his movement going and get his distance, I think if Jeremy puts the pressure on it, He's going to take the fight. I think he can he can force uh, Yair into bad positions. But 
I, I think if Jeremy is hesitant in that fight, uh, I definitely think that Yair could start getting off his movement. And he's very diverse. You know, he does a lot of different weird stuff. His style is crazy. Right. You know? So I, I think it goes either two ways. It depends on who shows up and implements their game plan because they're both nasty. And I can't say one's going to beat the other. I really think it's going to come down to the mentality. If Jeremy comes in and fights his fight, I could see him backing, you know, backing him up and really, uh, you know, putting the pressure on him. But I don't know if he, if Jeremy doesn't, uh, if Jeremy doesn't put the right. pressure on him and he stands back, he's gonna let uh, Yair get that, get that range and get comfortable. And I think then it could be a bad night for Jeremy because he's gonna get hit from different angles he's never been hit from. No, I agree. I, I agree. That's so beautiful. if I had to make a prediction, though, I would definitely, uh, you know, ah, oh, that's that's a tough <laughs> one, man. That that's hard because Yair is so so awkward, you know, such an awkward but like Showtime type fighter. But Jeremy is just such a game type fighter. He comes and bites down. Yeah. And I I could see uh, I could see Jeremy pulling out the TKO in this in this one. Okay. I love what you said. First of all, I hear the sirens in the background. We're sending them to St. Louis, Missouri, November 1st. Uh, maybe yeah. for your opponent. We can't. We're, we're sending them ready for the main event. Exactly. <laughs> but back to the Yair, like he's one of those guys, like it's hard to pick against him because then he'll do a uh, Korean zombie, just something amazing. It's like, gosh, I want to get Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, he yeah. might do a spinning elbow or something. You don't know. Yeah. And it's like, wait, I picked against that man? It's crazy. Um, with that, it's, I kind of said it and then, you know, how do, how do you like every Saturday night, almost every Saturday night is UFC on ESPN. If it's not the pay-per-view, it's just the event last weekend, uh, dad Cerrone versus Justin Gaethje, incredible stuff in Vancouver, just every week, week in, week out. I think there's one in Copenhagen coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, just, it's insane. It's bananas. How many events UFC's putting on? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely insane. I mean, it's a, I think it's, I, w I don't know if I'd say a fighter's dream come true, but fight fans dream come true. You know, you, you have right. endless shows, you know, every, you know, whether if you watch UFC or Bellator, I mean, they're all right there. They're always every weekend, almost like you're saying, I mean, honestly, I, it would be cool. In my personal opinion, if, if more UFC shows weren't either, if they were on like a regular channel, like on a free channel. So, you know, they could be like more ESPN too. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, to me, like, you know, you got to have the ESPN plus and then pay-per-view. So I get what they're doing, but uh, no, I think it, I think it's, it's huge for our sport though. You know, when you're staying yeah. consistent like that in the eye of the fans in the world, I think it, you know, you stay in people's heads and UFC is more there instead of having one big show here right. and there. Because right. you know, next thing you know, three weeks go by and you, you're like, oh, I haven't watched that. And, oh, no, the fight. But if one, when they're every weekend, you yeah. know, you can kind of plan it out. It's part of your weekend. You know, like, all right, we got fights on this weekend. So, yeah, I definitely agree with you. It's pretty awesome. Absolutely, man. And we'll close it down with this. Um, you know, before you got on, I went on a little bit of a, not a ramp, but just a little bit of an idea, like how much uh, like respect comes in the game of mixed martial arts. And we, I especially talked about the lightweight division felt like a couple of years was a lot. And I'm, I love Connor. I love the talk. I love the fun. But like the seems like the division was really crazy, really loud. A lot of injuries. People, Tony and uh, Habib was supposed to fight four times. Never happened. The whole lightweight. And just in the last month with Habib and Dustin and the, how much they respected each other. And then even just we saw Gaethje and Donald Cerrone, how much they you know respected each other. They wanted to break bread. Um, and then, OK, so if we can talk about it a little bit, you were there for XFN, right? Like a crazy kind of uh, event happened there with with a lot of disrespect or yeah so like, from what i heard so crazy uh little thing here i left with like one minute left of the main <laughs> event uh i was with my buddy charles rosa and he wanted to get out of there and i don't yeah. blame him you know trying to beat the rush so right. we left a little early and then the next thing you know we hear there's a brawl and, and this guy you know i for me um i understand building up fights like you know like I definitely am not against, you know, saying, like, listen, you know, I'm going to break this dude's jaw and simple as that, blah, 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 right. or whatever you're going to say. Um, you know, I guess if you have a person, for me, like, when people ask, oh, is there anyone you don't like? There's not a single fighter I've ever said, like, oh, I dislike this guy. Talking about UFC, Bellator, or anywhere. I, for me, I don't know. I respect every martial artist. I, like, if they're a true martial artist, they're living this crazy lifestyle that I'm living. 
So right. for me, like, I don't know. I've never really been the one to understand how you could have like a, you know, I don't know, unless someone's trying to start shit with you and they bring up personal stuff and then you get mad. But to me, it's just kind of like, I'll let others do that. You know, like yeah. I'll let my fighting speak for itself. So there's someone like you somewhere right there in North Dakota that gets up in the morning, trains and, be, and his dream is to become a bantamweight UFC champion one day. Like I respect that there's, there's, there's someone in California trying to talk into a mic maybe as good as me, maybe one day, but we'll see. Yeah. I, I respect that person. It is crazy that there is a, like an angst to the other people. Not like they're, they're trying to get the same thing we're doing. And there's so much out there. Like I just said, there's so many events. There's so much out there. There's so much money in the mixed martial art game right now. Like, man, God bless them. Like do your thing. Like you do you, I'll do me. And then hopefully I'll meet you at Madison Square Garden in the middle of the ring, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No. And that's how I agree. And that, I think that's how everybody should go about it. I mean, and, but like I said, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be hype and there shouldn't be build up because that makes right. it fun. That makes, but oh. look at look at Mazadal and Diaz. They don't got to talk shit to each other. And it, we're like, let's see it just from the fact that they're confident. The way yeah. Mazadal or Diaz like can't know West Coast gangster, blah, blah, blah. You know, you know what I mean? The whole the whole yes. thing, that 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 type of trash talk is and I wouldn't even say it's trash talk, but it's just. You know, it's, yeah, real, it it's fun, it's emotion. Like, yeah, it yeah, emotion it's like, it. but, you see Mazadal in the crowd when he hears that, he ain't thinking like, fuck you, Diaz, you know, like, <laughs> oh, there's no, you know what I mean, I'm East Coast. No, he's sitting there saying, all right, dude, all right, I hear you. <laughs> he acknowledges it. He's like, all right, I respect that, because all said and done, you got to get in the cage and fight. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So really, the talking can only do so much, and right. I mean, I don't think fighters should let it get to them, honestly, you know, and... But it is what it is. I mean, you ain't gonna stop it. And uh, respect is respect is definitely something that you gotta have in the sport. Because if you don't have respect, you'll you'll learn the hard way. Right, my man. Amazing stuff. We can't wait. November first, main event, going five and zero. Oh, Shamrock FC. We're so excited. Uh, the floor is yours. Any kind of shout out, gym sponsors, anything like that. Uh, yeah, keep board, you know, keep board, the floor is yours. <laughs> Shout out to uh, shout out to you for having me for one. I appreciate it. You know, fight bananas all the way. Um, shout out to Platinum Vape, Upmost Existence, Savaki Fest, Tequilas, all all my sponsors that help me day in day out. Medicated Models, I love you guys all. You guys help me tremendously. This is how I do my fight camps. Um, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Scrappy135 MMA and keep up with me and follow me on this crazy ass journey. <laughs> My man, thank you so much. We can't wait. We'll maybe talk to you right before your fight, and we'll get at it. Let's do it. I look forward to hearing from you, my man. All right, brother. Later. All right. Talk to you later. Peace.